So first off here, after all these years, how is this only the first time you're voicing an animated character? Was there ever a point where you were offered an opportunity like that and it just didn't work for whatever reason? I have three words. You tell me. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I must say, in, in, in not, not in person audition, but I did many audition tapes for major agencies and never got one thing for years. Uh, one of the ways I accidentally backed into the business, even though I was fascinated with the business and I've been a cinematographer and director, filmmaker since I was 15 years old. Um, I was 18, I was walking down the street and somebody stopped me and said, excuse me, could I talk to you? And said, would you be interested in being in a commercial? And I said, like, what would I have to do? And they said, well, all you gotta do is, you know, dress up like a young cowboy and drive this truck. And I said, I wouldn't have to talk, would I? And they said, nope, no talking. What's it pay? 400 bucks. Oh, I'll take that job. So that was with BBD&O, the largest company in the United States that did that stuff. I did two Dodge, I did a Gallo wine commercial, and I sort of, suddenly I had a Screen Actors Guild card. And this meant I had to be on the other side of the camera, the lens side, you know, which just scared the wadden out of me. So I went on and, and, I, uh, and I went to school. I, went, I tried to get rid of this feeling. And I almost got it 50, 60 years later. <laughs> I would say you have it by now. Uh, so jumping into your very first animated role, is there anything about being so hyper-focused on voice work that even after all these years has, you know, let you discover something new about your craft that you might not have even realized was there before? Well, I got invited to, uh, by a friend, I got assigned by a friend to narrate a series, eight episodes. And uh, that was Robert Downey Jr. and his wife Susan. The series became a worldwide number one on, uh, on streaming for a month. And because of that, Pixar became aware of me and suddenly, you know, like, okay, yeah, he's, he, that's what he does for a living. And I'm the pick of the week, the voice of the week, after all those years. And uh, in, in going to work for Pixar, and in matter of fact, with both jobs, I sort of didn't have any choice. Robert said, this is what you're doing, make your deal with Warners, do it on your own, but just show up and do this. Then Pixar said, we can't tell you anything about the role, we can't give you the lines, we can't, you just have to show up and we're gonna train you on the spot because it's all a secret. And so I got there and heard about Zerg, and I mean, I knew of Zerg, but I didn't really know the parameters of what they were gonna do with him because they've taken him to a whole nother area, you know. That they have. Yeah, yeah including an area of self-examination and questioning life and parallel worlds and all of those things. Anyway, I, I learned it in an empty room with nobody around, or the director and the whole staff was on screen from San Francisco, 400 miles away, and I'm in the Pixar room in the studio there where nobody showed up. It was like in the middle of pandemic time. Nobody was around. Not one car in the parking lot except mine. <laughs> so this is a huge adventure in a way, you know. It's a, Good adventure to yeah. take. Oh yeah, and look, it's gonna make, uh, it's a, it's a great movie for everybody. Have you seen it? I have yeah, seen it. I saw, saw it last night. Yeah, it's not. It's not just a toy movie. It's quite, quite the adventure, the personal examination, and also for me, who's obsessed with cats, socks is now is now life. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've yeah. never been so obsessed and with the cats And I think it before. opens for Pixar a whole new uh, type of movie.